Okay, guys, you can't pick Jalen Brunson or Julius Randle, but Chris, who needs to step up for the Knicks if Hart can't go tonight? I mean, listen, you could take your pick from any of the uh, the role players, but I'm focused in on R.J. Barrett. You know, I thought that he uh, parts of his game in game one left a lot to be desired. So he obviously did not see the court down the stretch as the Knicks were putting the game away. So, look, I mean, when you're talking about Josh Hart potentially missing the game, you're looking at some of the things that don't show up in the box score all the time. The intangibles, obviously his defense, the rebounding does show up in the box score. But, you know, whether it be extra minutes for R.J. Barrett down the stretch in crunch time or you're going to get some more looks at Emmanuel quick uh, quickly Quentin Grimes you know you can take your pick of any of these guys are going to have to fill the void there so we saw a lot of heart from Josh Hart in that first playoff game he looked the part so you're looking for one of these other young guys to step up and fill that void you know the Cavs are going to come a lot with uh, come come with a lot here in game two so if the Knicks are going to pull it off and win two road games someone's going to have to fill those shoes admirably here in game two I'm looking at Emmanuel quickly, guys. This is a player who's the sixth man of the year candidate. He's one of the most improved players in the NBA. But let's be honest, he was a non-factor in game one and was a non-factor considering Jalen Brunson found himself into early foul trouble. I think for the Knicks to have a legitimate chance to go and beat the Cavaliers in game two, they're going to have to shoot the lights out from beyond the arc. They didn't shoot it great until Jalen Brunson got going in the fourth quarter. And if you're not going to have Josh Hart you're going to need that influx of offense quickly can give you that instant offense. He can carry a team down the stretch. He has to be much better in game two. Yeah, no doubt. Quickly had so many big games down the last uh, four to six weeks of the season. Tom Thibodeau certainly would like to see him get going. All right, let's take a look at Jalen Brunson's numbers in game one presented by Honda. As JJ mentioned, hindered by foul trouble early, Brunson logged 30 minutes and led the Knicks with 27 on 11 of 24 shooting from the field. Now you know it's officially the playoffs when people are whining about the officials, but Cleveland's Isaac Okora telling reporters on Monday that Brunson's antics help draw fouls. J.J., what do you think? Was Brunson a drama major at Villanova? No, I didn't think that was Jalen Brunson's specialty uh, down I-95 in Philadelphia, but let me give Mr. Okoro a little bit of credit here because I am a full-fledged supporter of gamesmanship your team is down 0-1 you had no answer for Jalen Brunson in the fourth quarter so hey if you're trying to get the benefit of the whistle in a must-have for your Cleveland team I'm all about it I don't think it's going to phase the best player on the New York Knickerbockers and arguably the best player in this series Jalen Brunson was that good in game number one but see oh I got no issues with a Coral. I loved it I thought it was fantastic I'll be quick here with my with my uh, ad on this. I mean, am I missing something? He shot four three throws in the game. He's a guy in the regular season that was not making regular trips to the free throw line. So when you're six foot one and you take the ball to the rack, I mean, listen, you're going to draw some contact and here and here and there you're going to get fouled. So uh, Brunson's a winning player. We know that. I don't think it's going to phase him one bit. JJ, obviously from the Phil Jackson, Reggie Miller school. If you can't beat him, <laughs> whine about him. OK, uh, let's now get to the predictions. Chris, who wins game two? Look, it's the deck is stacked against the Knicks from the standpoint that tough to pull off two road wins. We already covered the Josh Hart situation, but you guys talked about it. I mean, they were Jalen Brunson was not much of a factor in the first half because of the foul trouble. The Knicks did a tremendous job, I thought, in the second half. Darius Garland, I don't think, scored after halftime. So even if Hart's down and Donovan Mitchell has another big game, we've talked about it already. I think the Knicks do have enough to overcome. So I'd expect another tight game, but I'll give a slight edge to the Cavs. And I think this series is tied coming back to the Garden. I hope I'm dead wrong on this prediction. I think Cleveland by double digits. I just think it's a brutal spot for them. Cleveland has to win this game if they want to go and win this series. And I think they will get more from their supporting pieces. They'll get more from their big guys. They'll hit a couple of more threes. I think they'll feed off the home crowd. The Knicks did their job here. First two games on the road. I think Cleveland gets it done in game two. Yeah, I'm with you. It's going to be tough sledding for the Knicks. I'm keeping a close eye on Julius Randle to see, you know, if the adrenaline wears off game two and how much stamina he has after missing so much time down the stretch run. JJ and CeeLo, thanks for hanging with us here on Honda Sports Night.